What's going on YouTube? It's Eli with Common Sense. I hope you are having a fantastic week and I hope that you enjoyed a nice Father's Day weekend. It's been a little while, I know. I'm back from my tiny little break from creating content. I spend a little bit of time with my family. Every now and then you just kind of need a little bit of time to ground yourself and spend time with your loved ones. Definitely be around them and appreciate them while they're here. Today we're going to be looking at four fragrances that I got from Triple Traders. So Triple Traders is an online website where you can buy a lot of affordable Middle Eastern fragrances. Most of them are under $50. A lot of them are in the $20 to $30 range. So if you're on the hunt for really awesome Middle Eastern fragrances, then definitely check out TripleTraders.com. I actually spoke with the company and they were kind enough to give me a 10% off discount code. So if you use this code, common sense, it'll save you 10% on your entire order. So if you want to buy a single fragrance or if you want to discover a ton of different fragrances and do sort of like a haul, you can save 10% and it's a good way to save a little bit of money and also support the channel because I do get a tiny little commission for each sale. So that's just a cool way to save money and also support me. So without further ado, Let's get started. So all these fragrances I did open beforehand. I did get a chance to try all of them on skin, give them full wearings. And I have to say, a lot of them are pretty dang nice. The first one up on this list is from the house of Maison Alhambra. And this one is The Myth. As you can see, this box has a really interesting design. It's got kind of that gold metal flake on the outside. This is a 100 ml Eau de Parfum. And on the back, it's pretty simple. You have your reflective sticker and all of the information about Maison Alhambra. As you open this up, you can see it actually has its, this really nifty little drawstring bag. So it's kind of hiding the fragrance inside. Yeah, the little drawstring bag looks like this. It feels super cheap, but that's okay because the bottle looks really, really cool. As you can see, this bottle looks absolutely stunning. It's got a beautiful blue kind of hue to the glass. And at the top, you have a really kind of heavy cap. It is plastic, but it definitely feels nice and it snaps into place really, really nice. I gotta say, I really like the design for this bottle. They nailed that kind of vibe with the original Gucci song for the rose. I think it looks very similar, but let's see how it smells. So this fragrance actually has notes of oud, amber, violet, iris, mimosa, rose, and woods. So you're definitely in for a bit of a dusty kind of rose with a nice kind of waxy iris. So on this opening, immediately you notice the bright and kind of jammy rose up top. It's a little bit tart and synthetic and gives me the same kind of synthetic rose vibe that you get from something like Latafa's Badi Al Oud Amethyst. So I immediately thought that this rose was going to be a little bit soft. This is not the case. It's a little bit more sharp and kind of woody with a bit of a tart citrus vibe. I almost feel like I get a little bit of bergamot. It's not actually included in there, but it does kind of share some of that bright edgy kind of citrus in addition to that rose. So something about that mimosa and the violet gives it something very powdery and just a bit of a floral touch that also comes off very tart. So online, this one actually says that it's for men, but I think this is a little bit more feminine leading, at least up top. So I do have the dry down here and I have to say it does smell better than the opening. I think the oud here brings definitely a lot more of an earthy and woody kind of facet to this and those woods just kind of balance everything out a little bit more, at least in the dry down. I also noticed that the amber definitely does come out a lot stronger. I think it's a little bit more salty you get a little bit more of an aromatic kind of vibe, at least mixed with the woods. And I really do like how that kind of comes out once it is dried down. So I actually wore this one several days ago on my wrist. And I remember I was washing my hands after doing some dishes. I actually really, really enjoyed how it smelled after the water had kind of rinsed away some of the harshness. And you were left with a lot of that nice kind of powdery woods, a little bit of those kind of purple florals, but it smelled absolutely fantastic. I feel like my expectations for this one were a little bit different. Different. I felt like I was gonna get something a little bit more soft and a little bit less synthetic, but don't get me wrong, this does smell pleasing. I think it's a little bit more of a waxy and peppery rose as opposed to something real soft and kind of gentle. I think the iris and the violet do provide a nice twist on the traditional kind of rose and oud DNA, but I think in this one, the oud takes a bit of a back seat and the rose and some of those florals do come out and give a slightly peppery and kind of woody vibe. Definitely not bad, but I do think that there are far better rose fragrances out there for this price, like Maison Alhambra's Infinity Rose. I actually have to review that one next. But if you're looking for something with a really interesting kind of blue bottle with that kind of blue and gold presentation, and don't mind a little bit of that synthetic vibe to kind of wear off after about 30 minutes or so, I think you might like this one because it does have that interesting play on the rose. It just makes it a little bit more peppery. So this one I only paid 30 bucks for, and I'd have to say I probably wouldn't pay any more than that for this one. It does smell pretty 
pretty dang nice, but I think for the longevity, it lasts about six to seven hours on my skin and it projects pretty dang strong for the first two to three hours. 30 bucks, I think six to seven hours is fair. But like I said, I think there are some better options out there for this price point. And that one is Maison Alhambra's The Myth. Next up on this list is another Maison Alhambra fragrance, and this one is Maison Alhambra's Laden. As you can see, it shares those same kind of vertical lines striping with the original packaging, and it has the Parfums de Marly uh, horses and Pegasus. Pegas Pegasi? Horses on the front. Leyden. As you can see, this is definitely a clone and interpretation of Perfumes de Marly's Leighton. This is kind of an interesting presentation because you have the Perfumes de Marly body, but at the same time, it almost looks like you have a Zerzhov cap. It's kind of a strange hybrid. The cap itself is very lightweight. I'm not a huge fan. It's a fingerprint magnet, uh, but I do kind of like the matte kind of blue look on this bottle. It looks kind of cool. Hmm. That's definitely an interesting vibe up top. Actually, that's a pretty good atomizer. <laughs> I feel like it simplifies the notes that are in the original Parfums of Marley Layton. It's got similar notes, but they're slightly different. This one's got notes of bergamot, lavender, geranium, amber, and pink pepper. So immediately up top, it smells like a slightly sweet and almost like a licorice, like a kind of herbaceous, almost a medicinal vibe. You do have a bit of that fresh and tangy bergamot up top, but something up there gives it a little bit of an aromatic and resinous kind of green quality to it. I think there is a little bit of the apple in here, but I feel like they use a little bit less of the apple, but it still definitely does smell nice and slightly fruity up top. Yeah, something up top reminds me a little bit of a cough drop. It's kind of peppery, a little bit medicinal. Can't quite put my finger on it. I think it might be that lavender cutting through now that I think about that. I also feel like I'm getting a little bit of that mandarin orange still, even though it's not really listed on this fragrance. I think this one is bringing a little bit of that kind of peppered warmth from the original. It just takes a little bit for it to calm down on the skin. So let's give it a little time and come back to it. Okay, so this dry down is fantastic. I have to say, once you get over that slightly strange opening, it smells absolutely fantastic. It's not too long before it reaches its peak, maybe about 10 minutes or so, and then it smells really nice. On the dry down, I feel like this becomes a lot more salty and you get a little bit of that spiced amber. So amber can actually take on a couple different forms, especially when it's just pure amber because amber can smell really salty. It can smell really interesting, almost like an ambroxan kind of vibe where it's kind of fresh. It's a little bit musty but at the same time it can also take on a little bit of a spiced kind of warm vanilla vibe and I feel like this amber definitely does kind of both of them. I feel like in the dry down it becomes almost a wheat like almost baked warm kind of oatmeal cookie because it just smells real spice real vanillic it's creamy and it smells nice and gourmand. I think you lose a little bit of that kind of floral geranium at the top and instead I feel like a lot of cardamom comes out and I don't see that one listed in the notes but that's kind of what I'm getting. I get that cardamom and the amber vibe. I really really like that they added amber to this one because I don't believe amber is in the original Parfums de Marley Layton. I think they ramped it up and they kind of mixed around that DNA and they put a nice twist on it because it smells absolutely fantastic once it dries down and it kind of calms down and the notes kind of settle down on the skin. I think it smells absolutely modern and bright and I actually really enjoy the take that they took on Parfums de Marly's Layton. I actually wore this one out last week and I really couldn't smell it after about four or five hours. I actually went to my brother and I was like, hey, can you smell the cologne that I'm wearing? And he was like, it's very faint and he had to get like super close to me. So I know I'm throwing out a lot of numbers, but I'd have to say this one does give about two hours of solid projection and then it kind of sits closer to the skin and by about the sixth hour, you either have to refresh yourself with this or you have to get a different fragrance entirely. I have been carrying this one around in my personal bag because I do like to refresh myself, but I think the juice here smells really nice while it lasts. It just needs more sprays throughout the day. So take that into consideration when you're buying this one. I believe I paid $30 for this one, so not terrible, but I have heard that there are fantastic clones and takes on Layton that do far better in terms of performance, but I actually do like how this one smells once it dries down. And that one is Maison Alhambra's Layden. Mm. 
And this next fragrance I was super, super hyped to try because I have been looking for a high quality clone of this particular fragrance. And I'm talking about Maison Alhambra's Grease. This one is an interpretation of Christian Dior's Gris Dior. And I absolutely love that fragrance. I love how it smells super aquatic, floral, and just kind of soft. And I have been looking for a high quality clone of that one. So we're gonna try this one. This one's got a cylindrical kind of package that opens up and you're granted with this really tall cylindrical pretty bottle that's 100 ml and it is also an eau de parfum concentration. This one does come with a metallic cap it feels like or a really heavy plastic but this one it's got a nice cap and it sits nicely on the atomizer. Man this just makes me smile. Pretty nice atomizer on this one. Oh. <laughs> that's what I've been looking for. So this one has notes of rose, patchouli, and bergamot. Super simple, just a three note layout, but this one, it smells absolutely fantastic. It reminds me of sort of earthy, rainy flowers. This one smells like a fresh rose that you can just see the condensation and water droplets forming on the surface. It smells absolutely fantastic. You have a really crisp yet delicate sweetness from the rose and the bergamot, giving it a little bit more of a kind of sweet and citrusy floral vibe here. I think this one also has a little bit of oak moss like the original, even though it's not listed, but I do kind of get a little bit of that creamy, inky sort of vibe. And I feel like it does add a little bit more of a mature quality to this one. But that patchouli, that earthy darkness just balances out the light florals up top and it makes it smell absolutely well-rounded. Yeah, I don't know why, but this one and the original Greed Your, they both kind of remind me of a stormy day that you can just kind of see the clouds start to kind of part and get that light peeking through. It's that perfect balance of kind of dark wetness, but at the same time you have a really interesting light and delicate floral. Yeah, on the dry down, I do feel like I get more of that oak moss and that amber as well. That amber just gives it a little bit of a darker warmth. But man, that patchouli, the oak moss, and all of that just kind of blend together to make a perfect balance. I'm actually really surprised at how similar this smells to the original Gris Dior. I have to say it definitely does stay pretty linear the whole time. It does keep that wet and inky rose and oak moss, but I love how this one smells on my skin. So in terms of longevity, this one does really, really good. It lasts well over nine hours. Like I've sprayed this on my skin before work and I can still smell it after work. And it has fantastic projection. Four hours projecting really strong. I love spraying this one on myself before going to bed and it's just really soft, it's calming, and it smells absolutely wonderful for the price. I believe this one is also 30 bucks, so definitely a steal for this price. This, this one, without a doubt, smells insanely close to the original Gris Dior, and I'd, I'd highly recommend this one. And that one is Maison Alhambra's Grease. So I've been reviewing a lot of Maison Alhambra's today, but we actually have a different one, and this one is from the house of Paris Corner, and this one's Paris Corner's Killer Oud Red I was gonna say rejuvenation. Killer Oud Revolution. I can't get over how cool this presentation is. You have that really cool kind of iridescent look on the outside. It's a little bit mirrored and it looks absolutely amazing. So all of the Killer Oud fragrances by Paris Corner are interpretations of Amouage fragrances. They're Amouage clones. But this one is supposed to be a clone of Amouage's Reflection Man. Look at this cool bottle. That just looks awesome. You have this little silver tassel and I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but you should be able to see it on the B-roll. Finish on the bottle makes it look real cool and it kind of has that reflective look to the outside in the original bottle. So like the rest, this one is an 100 ml bottle and it is an eau de parfum. This one's got notes of jasmine, neroli, sandalwood, and orris is some of the main notes in this one. So this one is incredibly soft, sweet, and sexy up top. This one smells really uplifting and floral. I really like it when men's fragrances do florals right because it just gives a really interesting kind of approach to these fragrances and it gives a little bit more fragrance options for men. Mm. So that one smells quite natural up top. You definitely get a nice herbaceous, creamy floral up top, especially from that jasmine and the neroli. It smells really white, almost like white linens. But you get quite a really nice herbaceous green facet to this one. And I feel like it also has a little bit of a minty vibe coming from that rosemary because rosemary can take on a real kind of harsh vibe and sometimes it can come off a little bit more fresh and minty. I think the jasmine and the neroli are perfect here. Those two notes together are heaven. So I noticed that once this one hit my skin, I didn't smell any alcohol blast like on some cheaper fragrances. It just immediately came out and it smelled like Reflection Man. But like some of the other ones, you can go nose blind to this one, especially if you're smelling a bunch of different fragrances like I'm doing right now. 
So this one, I absolutely love how the juice smells. It smells incredibly close, especially on this dry down. Once it dries down, it smells nearly identical to Reflection Man. With a lot of the Maison Alhambras, the Latafas, and some of the higher end $50, $60 Middle Eastern fragrances, I noticed that they really step up their game in terms of presentation as well as the longevity and the quality of the kind of compositions themselves. This one is a $50 fragrance, so it's a little bit more than I'd like to spend on a Middle Eastern fragrance but I definitely wanted to give this one a try because it looked amazing and it just came out and I really wanted to review this one. One in particular that I really love and was surprised by was Maison Alhambra's Ombre Blue. I think that one smells absolutely mature and it is insane in longevity. It lasts like 12 hours at least on the skin and that one was some of the best presentation that I've ever seen but I feel like with this one it lacks a little bit in longevity. I think I'm willing to give up a little bit of that longevity simply for how accurate and how wonderful this one smells on the skin but there's something so nice about that sandalwood that creaminess and it just smells ultra warm and inviting while staying a little bit more casual and approachable because you can wear this in almost any situation i feel like this one can be dressed up or it can be a simple soft relaxing weekend fragrance it just smells really clean it's definitely office friendly and it's sweet sadly like i said the performance isn't amazing with this one but i feel like if you spray it for eight or nine times on your skin this will last well into the eight hour range but by about six hours it starts to kind to die down and it gets a little bit closer to the skin. But like I said, I'm willing to look past the price because of how wonderful the juice smells and also for the presentation because I love how this looks. And that one is Paris Corners Killer Oud Revolution. So that does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little mini review of all four of these fragrances. I have to say that I do enjoy a lot of these, but I'd have to say out of all four of them, Killer Oud, Revolution, as well as Maison Alhambra's Grease, I think those two are the best out of these. The other two are definitely good fragrances. I'm a huge fan of Leyden. I just can't really recommend it for the performance, as well as that longevity. And the other one, just not really my style of fragrance. But hopefully you'll go out there and you'll buy the fragrances that you want to wear. And don't forget, 10% common sense. That'll save you some money. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you were new, definitely leave a comment down there. I'd love to say hi, and I'd love to just chat about fragrances. And if you're a regular, thank you so much for tuning in again and staying a part of the channel. I've been Eli with Common Sense, and until the next time, bye-bye. Because it is giving that... Because it is giving... <laughs> it's, it's giving... It's not even giving what y'all said it was supposed to give. Ow! Really? <laughs> Just fell on my head. <laughs>